Want to talk implants? Here we have them. So silicone was invented in, in like 1950, 1950s, and implants were invented in 1960. They were uh -huh. used starting in 1962, invented in Houston, Texas, where everything is big. And they were a big success ever since, and the implants are very similar to the original ones. Silicone shell on the outside, and either silicone or saline on the inside. The texturing on the outside was designed so that they wouldn't get hard, but we, we don't use texturing anymore. Correct. You These, never really liked it though, right? <coughs> never was a big yeah. fan. These are what? Yeah, these are teardrop. These are not implants, though. These are sizers, oh, yeah. so you can see what we'll do. <laughs> uh huh. Here. Did I embarrass you? No, not at all. I I didn't look I to I be honest, myself. which I think is. <laughs> so these are used for a patient to get Sizing. a sense of how big the implant will be, because it's yes. hard to get. It's hard to tell from the shape implant. So, so now. A, a small implant, roughly 200 cc's. This will give you nice. one increased cup size. Okay. So for every 200 cc's, it's roughly one cup size. Okay. And then, and then an implant shaped like this is a shaped implant, but 90 some odd percent of implants are going to be round. And round implants though, can have differences in size, but also you see how the shape is different. So as you fill the implant up more and more, it becomes rounder and rounder. So you get more projection, right. but you also, it gets firmer and firmer. So an implant like this, that's a moderate or low profile implant, meaning it's not as round. Projection. You get less yes. projection, but it's softer. Right. So for a woman who needs that projection because the shape of her own breast is, is requires it, you need a higher profile implant. It's also kind of a, a preference. And then size, this is a larger, larger implant, larger. This is 600 cc's. Wow, can I see that? Can I don't I think you're old enough. <laughs> you, you can see that one. This is a, actually, these are nice. Okay, All right, go ahead. Oh. This, up. this is a saline implant. We're pumping it up with air to show you. Why do you hold it up? Oh, so I just took there's an injection oh. tubing. There's a little port right here. I'll put it back in for you. And, and this little valve allows you to fill it up in surgery. Right. And then surgery, it, well, I got to take it out to fill it up. You have to <laughs> unplug it. This is a one-way valve. So the saline can't get out while you're filling it up. Exactly. Have you ever done this before? I have. I'm actually really good at it now that you taught me that it's, you know, how it works. Yeah. See? And you just keep, you go saline and then you. And then when you lose track of how much saline you put in, you start all over. And you have to keep track because they have to be even. They don't have to be, but it makes well, for a lot happier patient. I'm just saying. I know. So now we've filled this up with air, not yeah. saline, but it's filled it's filled with saline, which is just salt water. So two kinds of implants, silicone filled and saline or salt water filled. If um, the difference is that this will be lighter and this will be heavier. This will be a more expensive implant. This will be a less expensive implant, not necessarily for the surgery, but the implant itself is less expensive. If this leaks, you will go flat. You won't, the saline doesn't hurt you. If this leaks, if this ruptures, the silicone is still contained within the scar tissue capsule, so you won't have any difference in size. Right. Other than that, any, um, any differences? This is more natural feeling. Much if you more hug natural a person, feeling. you'll feel this more. Yeah. What are the problems with breast implants? Implant yeah. gets super hard, a capsular contracture like that. Feel that implant. Very hard. What do you do? Basically, it's a surgical problem. You 
surgically remove the implant, release the capsule, and then replace the implant with the same implant or a new implant. Right. What if the implant gets infected, the uh, pocket gets infected, the breast is hot, it's red, it's painful, mm -hmm. what do you do? Take out the implant. Take out the Wash implant. Wash it out. Wash it out and don't put the implant exactly. back in usually for a few weeks until everything is all healed up. Correct. What do you do if the saline. implant, the saline leaks? Yeah, what do you do if it just all of a sudden you have a deflated breast? You come on in and we need to replace that exactly. broken implant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, I cut That's you off. It's so sad when that happens. I know, and I cut you off, but I... You could do that. You no, do that I, I know, I, I feel rude, but... What, <laughs> what other problems can there be? What do you do when an implant is, is just thing. too big? They still look good, they're still... <sighs> but the breasts have started to sag, the implant... The woman maybe has gained a little bit of weight and has a little more weight in her breasts. Years have gone by and these uh, implants hanging. are hanging and, and causing need a pain. You need a lift. How do you do a lift? You do, you tailor tack the breast up. Yeah, you do it. So then it's down here so. and it gets up here. Maybe That's take, very scientific maybe medical terms. Maybe take the terms. implants out and, and put fat in maybe you don't even need an implant at that point. I know. <clears throat> what do you do if the implant is older than 10 years old? If it's causing you no issues and you still are happy with them, you can leave them. If they're older than 10 years old and they're causing any of the issues we've previously discussed, then you can replace them. You can replace them, but they don't have a time limit, right? No, I mean, they, they the, the companies usually say 10 years, but if that 10 years, it's not like a hard knock 10 years. Did you like that answer? I didn't understand the hard knock. I mean, like a hard, rigid. Hard line. I understand that, but a knock is like final. No, a knock? A knock is like okay. boom, knock. Fine, 10 years. You don't need it. You're. No. Do you want to hold the big one again? <laughs> she likes them. Other than that, I think you did great. Did I? Yeah. What is the name of the man that invented the breast implant? Mm. We should remember him because he's since passed away, but he was- What's uh, his initials? F G. Um, Frank. Frank. Um, I want to say like Jur or something. Frank Jurel. Mm -hmm. Frank Jarreau in Houston, Texas. Very good. Thank you. And so uh, we should give Frank Jarreau credit yes. for a major Dr. advance. Dr. Jarreau? Dr. Frank Jarreau. He was, uh, he was a resident when he did that. Wow. He was a resident. and um, That's really interesting. Yeah, and, and not only were women able to have a reliable augmentation, but if you think about it, back in the day, uh, before 1962, you didn't have any breast reconstruction. You just had mastectomy. Right. And a woman who had a mastectomy or even a portion of the breast removed or had asymmetry naturally, she had no reasonable alternatives. All the alternatives were terrible. And with the invention of the modern breast implant, those women had a chance for a much more normal yeah. appearance. So thank you, Frank Jarreau. And thank you everybody, direct from Aronowitz land where we uh, are using a lot of implants still. We're doing fat grafting to the breast, but we're also doing implants for breast reconstruction, yes. for breast augmentation and all, and just for playing with them. All right, you can hold the big one for a minute. And we want to say goodbye from Aronowitz land. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Everything is just great here and we hope you have Hunky a dory. wonderful day.